I'd like to welcome you to the September 24th, 2007 Planning Commission meeting for the City of Thousand Oaks. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The secretary, please call roll. Commissioner Adam? Here. Commissioner Grumney? Here. Commissioner Lund? Here. Commissioner Reynolds? Here. Chair Fisher? Here. Uh, item number four are public comments. Members of the public are invited to address the commission on issues that are within the commission's purview and not on the agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes and at this time I don't have any cards for um, public comment. So we will go ahead and uh, continue to item number five, uh, written comments, announcements, continuances. Thank you, Chair Fisher. I would like to mention that there is a supplemental packet for the Commission's consideration. In it are uh, several conditions that relate to the uh, proposed Armstrong Garden Center project that you will be hearing in a few minutes. These address uh, the uh, topics of hours of operation, oak tree removal, and oak tree pruning, as well as no parking sign placement on Thousand Oaks Boulevard. Those are the first two memos in your supplemental packet. And these are all overall uh, relatively minor uh, changes, nothing uh, significant uh, nor substantive there. The um, second item is a slight revision to the resolution from your last meeting that addressed the uh, issue of alterations for landscaping plans and that modifies a portion of the resolution on page Is uh, the top of page 94 of your packet. So just to orient you to that location. And that's all I had at this time. Thank you, Mr. Town. Will the Secretary please call case 6A? Hearing advertised as required by law is hereby open to consider agenda item 6A regarding case SUP 2007-70287, applicant Panatoni Development Company, request to allow a change of use from industrial to office and exterior building, parking and landscaping modifications. Location 2101 Corporate Center Drive, recommendation approved with conditions. Ms. Pedroso. Good evening, Chair Fisher, uh, Fisher sorry, <laughs> and the members of the Commission. Uh, the project it, for your consideration is a change in use from industrial to office in an existing industrial um, building located on 2101 Corporate Center Drive. Um, right now, the facility was used for R&D before, and uh, it's been vacant. It's been recently purchased, and they're looking into bringing a new one or two uh, office uh, tenants to the to this building. Uh, the context of the project uh, the, uh, it includes extending existing parking to provide for parking for the office use, modify existing landscaping, and minor exterior changes to the building. This is a propor proposed um, site plan, and uh, what they pretty much have done is that this is as an existing right now. There's some outdoor uh, kind of patio area and landscaping, and some of that has been removed to provide new parking over here. And then in the back, there's, there was actually a, a big loading dock, and that's gonna be removed, and landscaping will be added with some parking areas. The parking along this side had been, it will be extended, and some landscaping will be removed, and so on this side. Uh, as far as the exterior building changes, Pretty much remains the same except for in the back area there's some existing roll up doors and those will be changed with uh, storefront material and some there was some new windows will be added to match the existing building. Uh, the project design includes uh, the existing building that is 
about 50,000 square feet. Uh, some trees will be removed and landscaping to extend for parking. And like I said, the learning that will be removed, new trees are gonna be planted and then replace the roll up doors with storefronts. This is a view from uh, the easterly driveway looking towards the front of the building. Um, this is um, some existing trees, the building is back here and the front parking area. This is the side of the building where we're gonna be adding parking and a lot of these trees, pretty much all these trees are gonna be removed. This is the view towards the front of the uh, parking lot area and that's not really gonna change much. And this is looking at the building, most of the streets are going to be retained. And this is a view from the, from the westerly driveway of the parking lot. This is that outdoor area that I was talking about. And uh, the streets are being removed, some of them we keep in and then we're creating new parking over here. Uh, back here shows the, where the toy and tree is and there's no construction happening around the tree or near the tree. And this is the back area of the building. This is the loading dock, which is gonna be removed. And uh, here is gonna be a lot of more landscaping, loading zone and some parking spaces. And this is again, the loading dock and the trash enclosure. And this is from the easterly parking lot looking from the back of the building towards the front showing that area that's gonna be parking. The project is categorically exempt as a category with a class one as a minor alteration to existing facilities. And the staff recommends approval of SUP 2007-7287 based on the findings and subject to the conditions. How many questions am available? Questions? Commissioner Adam. Thank you, good evening, Ms. Pedroza. Uh, just a question on the uh, requirement for 50% shade coverage. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with that. Is that based on the, the total area of the parking lot then? 50% of it should be shaded? It's, uh, it is of the paved area, 50% uh, needs to be shaded. And I, I did not mention, but they are actually adding 60 trees. Yeah, more trees than are, than are coming out. But it's not per parking space, it's just the, the gross area. The gross area, basically what we're looking is for a canopy that is gonna provide shade for about 50% of the, of the parking area. Ultimately, once yeah. the trees grow out. Mm -hmm. And just one other thing, on um, one of the maps that was provided for us, map uh, L3, it was the tree shading plan. Uh, in, the, in the center of it, it, it says, um, that the shade coverage would be 29 percent. Is uh, that? Uh, it could possibly be when as they're installed. And uh, I know the landscape consultant for the applicant is here, and they may be able to answer that question uh, in more detail. Okay, I'll ask them. Thanks. Additional questions, Commissioner Lynn. Good evening. Number five in regards to the loading zone, we're gonna take out the loading dock and then, so I make sure that I have this right, we're actually gonna have two loading zone areas, correct, for this building? That is correct. Great, thank you. Other questions? Okay. Let's go ahead and open the uh, public hearing. Uh, we'll start with the uh, main speaker, Brian Pullican. Mr. Pullican, please state your name, city of residence, and you have 15 minutes. Uh, my name is uh, Brian Pollockwin. Uh, I live in Westlake Village, California. Uh, I, am, uh, I represent Panatani Development as the architect. Uh, my firm is Pollockwin Kellogg Design Group, and we reside at 6400 Canoga Avenue, Suite 215, Woodland Hills, California. Um, I'm here to answer any questions that you would uh, wish to ask me. Uh, but uh, the main uh, concept behind this project was because there's predominantly office in the area surrounding this building. The building had been vacant for a bit. Uh, Penn and Tony Development bought the building uh, with the intention of changing the use to an office use. Uh, so we modified the parking lot area to accommodate the, mod the, uh, the, the office use for a four per thousand market parking. Uh, we worked very closely with Ms. Pedroso, and I, I have to say that uh, uh, the City of Thousand Oaks has been wonderful to work with, and I'm not joking about that. It was uh, actually a good experience. Uh, 
to uh, run the um, project through there. But we, we did everything that we think we uh, needed to do to make this project an acceptable project. And, um, you know, again, if you have any questions of me uh, on the different things that we've been doing on the project, please go ahead and ask. Questions? Commissioner Adam. Uh, good evening, sir. I, I'll ask you the same question I asked Ms. Pedroza. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're replacing more trees and than are being removed. I think that's great. Just that the business of the shade coverage, I just happened to notice that on that L3 map that the plant, the new plantings would uh, provide 29% shade coverage. And uh, it says in other portions of the report that, you know, we wanted to see 50%. And my understanding is that the shading at, is at the time of installation. Uh, and then, of course, as the trees mature, they will get to okay. a 50 percent shade coverage on the project. So 29 percent initially and then it's ultimately. 25 percent at the time that we'll plant everything. Obviously, you know, you're going to have 15 gallon, 25 gallon, various okay. sizes, and they're not going to have the degree of shading that they will have as they mature. Okay. Thanks. Commissioner Lynn. Sir, I just wanted to let you know that uh, while we don't hear it very often, that it's very easy to work with the City of Thousand Oaks. Just wanted to let you know that kissing up, really, to the planner doesn't usually work, but your comments are appreciated. I wasn't trying to. I was just being <laughs> honest. I really was. Thanks. <laughs> Commissioner Grumney. Hi, good evening. Hello. Um, I'm just trying to have a better understanding that is when you go to lease the building out, is it going to be multiple tenants in there or are you looking for one tenant? I, my conversations with uh, the developer has been they would prefer one tenant, uh, but they'll probably look at one or two. The building is demisable into two. We don't see this building becoming a corridor with internal toilet rooms and that sort of scenario. We really see it as a demising wall down the middle you know, whether it be 50 percent, 40 percent, 60 split on the building and, uh, and maybe have a main lobby at the primary entry uh, and then maybe have some secondary exit lobby conditions on both ends. The building has two glass elements on either end and a glass element at the center of the building uh, that can accommodate entry and exit for the building. So we, we're probably looking at one or two tenants and not, you know, 10 or more like a true multi-tenant office building. This is a pretty deep building. It's a really a, a, a very square building. But again, if you look at some of the other users like Blue Cross, like BMW, they generally have these deeper buildings where they have a lot of different types of operations going inside that are office oriented. And that's the way we see it being functioning. I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but do you know if the developer um, um, <laughs> has data or anything in the demographics of the area that there is more of a trend for this type of use than what it was previously used for? I think they, I, I do know the broker that they're working with and he does quite a bit of work in this area. They're working with, I, I believe it's CB Richard Ellis uh, and uh, I suspect they probably have pretty good demographics showing that there's a predominantly office use in that area. So really, but I couldn't this, answer exactly. Okay, so making this change is really going to be is 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 going to help you be able to get a tenant in this building. That's correct. It was the parking that was really, I think, hurting the leasability of the building. This okay. area tends to have a high, a little bit higher parking ratio than the the buildings that were originally designed. They were originally designed as like an R and D office. Uh, so the parking ratios were a little bit lower, but I think everybody's found that with Blue Cross and with Amgen and with BMW and the, those various types of companies in there, they require more parking and that's why we had to change the parking ratio on the building. And when we looked at the site plan and at the time they were looking at the building, they came to me and said, can we do this? And we looked at it and we said, I, I think we can. And we did a site plan and we did talk to the planner before we really dove into it to make sure that there was some chance that we could make the parking work. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, our next speaker, Megan Hutchison. Please state your name, city of residence, and you'll have five minutes. Uh, my name is Megan Hutchinson. I live in uh, Pacific Palisades, California. I'm with Panatoni Development Company. Were you available for questions only? I didn't uh, see yes. that. Okay. And what part of the development do you represent? 
I'm a development manager on the project in conjunction with our development analyst and senior development manager. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Thank you. That was easy. And I have a speaker card for Don Nguyen, questions only. Uh, Mr. Nguyen, state your name, city of residence. Uh, Don Nguyen, Nguyen Landscape Architects, uh, Topanga, California. Um, I'm the landscape architect on the project. And just the clarification on the um, tree shading plan. Um, Actually, the, the plan shows some eucalyptus trees on the street frontage that weren't included in that 29% figure that you see. So if one was to take the 15-year scenario, which I, I believe most cities do, with tree shading plans, 50% coverage after 15 years, um, we would certainly achieve the 50%. And that's all I have to say, unless you have questions. Questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go to uh, staff follow-up. Any questions for staff? No questions. Okay, we'll go back to. Okay, we'll go back to the uh, applicant, Mr. Poliquin. Uh, you have five minutes. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, I think we're fine. Okay. Any just, questions? Just want to make sure it was okay. on the record. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Nope. Great. Thank you. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing. Open for commission discussion and or motion. Commissioner Lynn. Thank you, Chair Fisher. I think this is a, a good project, appropriate and thoughtful use of the property. I like the fact that construction is going to be done in one phase. Uh, helps uh, the, the property owners to make reasonable use of the property. The parking's in compliance. The loading zone is twice of what's required. The architectural design is outstanding. I think it's nice when you remove a roll-up door and you put windows in. That's good. A new trash enclosure. And with that all to be said, I move to approve SUP 2007-70287 based on the following findings in the staff report and subject to the attached conditions. Comments to the motion? No comments? Vote, please. Motion passed, 5-0. There's a 10-day appeal period. Uh, will the secretary please call case 6B? Hearing advertised as required by law is hereby open to consider agenda item 6B regarding case SUP 2007-70285, applicant, Zuniga Trust, Lupi Zuniga, request to allow live entertainment, mariachi, at existing restaurant. Location, 1710 East Thousand Oaks Boulevard. Recommendation, approved with conditions. Mr. Alawami. Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, I'd like to uh, direct your attention to your monitor for staff's presentation. Uh, as mentioned, this is a special use permit application uh, for Luby's Mexican restaurant to allow live entertainment um, a location of the restaurant. Of, it's off uh, 1710,000 Oaks Boulevard. Um, here's a site plan and a floor plan showing uh, the route, which is the dotted line um, on, on the site plan, showing the route of the band that's going to be meandering and wandering around inside and outside. Uh, the, uh, the outdoor seating area and the expansion was approved by staff um, about six months ago. It has not uh, started construction yet, but uh, that's where uh, the band would be um, in and out of the restaurants, including the outdoor uh, seating area. Uh, this request, again, is to allow life entertainment within hours of operation of the restaurant. It's going to be a mariachi band and it's going to be indoor and outdoor. Uh, the hours of operation for the live entertainment is only bet, um, from noon until 9 p.m., seven days a week, which is less than the hours of operation of the restaurant. Uh, this is a picture of uh, the restaurant, and in the front of it, that's where the outdoor, outdoor customer seating area would be installed. Um, 
again, uh, the, the staff's evaluation of this, uh, the music will be played indoor and outdoor. The nearest residential area to the property line of the restaurant is, is approximately 210 feet north of the property separated by Thousand Oaks Boulevard and other commercial uses. The proposed hours are consistent with our restaurants in the, in the city. There will be no speakers or amplified uh, sound equipment used uh, for the live entertainment and uh, staff determined that the request will not have any adverse impact on surrounding properties. Uh, the project exempt from um, California Environmental Quality Act, class one, which is a minor change to an existing operation. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve special use permit 2007-70285 based on the findings and conditions in the report. And staff will be available for questions. Questions, Commissioner Reynolds. Good evening, Mr. Awani. Um, isn't this unusual to have music outside? Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's unusual. Um, I think we had, uh, it was, there is some life entertainment, but it's not since there's no music. There's music speakers in outdoor seating area, but not the life entertainment. Um, I don't recall if, uh, I did not do research on if there is life entertainment outdoor. Um, actually, we staff just approved for uh, Sushi Co, the restaurant on the Lakes Project, um, an outdoor music uh, that was done administratively, which was allowed under the specific plan uh, to allow um, life entertainment, and that was just approved about a few months ago by, by, by the city. Mm -hmm. I asked only because I thought in the past when we've approved outdoor seating or music that that there wouldn't be music in the outdoor. So, uh, but they are going to stroll. They're not going to stay right out there. Correct. They'll That's be meandering through the restaurant. In evaluation, in evaluating this request, uh, there was no no amplifier, no speakers, and they will be wandering in and out. So they're not going to be stationary for a long period of time. So, uh, and besides. Uh, Besides, the, the outdoor scene is located right next to Thousand Oaks Boulevard. There's already a lot of noises <laughs> out there. So <laughs> staff does not believe that it's going to be that much of an impact. And it's only a small area where the outdoor scene is, not a large area. Okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't the president setting. That was the only reason I asked the question. Thank you. Commissioner Gramney. Hi, Mr. Alawami. Um, the nearest residentials, did they receive notice from the city of Thousand Oaks in regards to this? Yes. Okay. All property owners within 500 feet have been notified. Of the property. Okay. Yes. And have you received any calls or any concern letters or anything from those? Um, staff received one telephone call from a property owner who lives over 600 feet away from the property, and the concern um, the concern was with with the when the Oak Terrace project was under construction, the rock with the rock breaking, and um, he, the, the, the person I talked to doesn't want the, the same noise level and I explained to him this is not going to be the same noise level as the rock breaking that was taking about a year and a half to accomplish. So, and I explained to him, I don't know if he's here tonight or not, but I, I asked him if he would attend. It's, okay. uh, it's his choice. But this is not the same noise level as the rock break, rock break in the greater operation of the Octaris. Um, the the you had mentioned that um, the extended or the hours for outdoor entertainment at Sushi Co. Sushi Co. Um, how late are they allowed to have uh, outdoor? I don't recall. I'm sorry, uh, but it's mostly the it's weekend. Gotta be, it's got to be later than nine. Though. It's late. Uh, the the restaurant will. I, th I my understanding will open until eleven. I think the Sushi Co. So you yes, think they might like have it for the entire correct. length? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions? Nope. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, open the public hearing. We'll go to our applicant, uh, Lupe Zuniga. Uh, Dr. Zuniga, please state your name, city of residence, and you'll have 15 minutes. Good evening. My name is uh, Dr. Lupe Zuniga. I am one of the owners. My sisters and I own Loopy's Mexican Restaurant. I live in uh, Studio City, California, and I'm very happy to be here. It's been my dream 
to be able to provide nice music for our wonderful customers and friends who come and want to enjoy their tacos and enchiladas. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. Questions? Commissioner Adam. Uh, just one little question. First of all, I'm very pleased that you're able to be here tonight, Dr. Zuniga. And, um, it's a pleasure. Uh, my question is, uh, how long has Lupe's been on the boulevard? Oh my goodness, well, we just celebrated our 60th anniversary in March. My mother opened on March 20th, I think it was St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, 1947. Is that right? Well, oh, that's spectacular. Thank you. Uh, also, c congratulations on, on the future uh, expansion of the restaurant. I understand that you've been granted some permits to, uh, to uh, ultimately expand the restaurant, so. Yes, we're very excited and we're looking forward to yeah. it very much. I think that's Thank, great. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Grumney. I'm, I'm curious about the hours. Um, about the? About the hours that you, you oh, wanted sure. just to 9 o'clock. Yes. Was, was, was there a reason that it was just 9 and not 10? For those well, of actually, us who tend to go to dinner a little bit Well, later. actually, because we close at 9. Oh. So more, more than likely. Then that's the reason. Yeah, more than likely because the crew needs to have time to usher the customers out. They'll probably only go till 8.30, and besides, they're kind of pricey. So uh, the real good mariachis are a little pricey, so we have to watch our budget. So we're not going to have them go on too much longer beyond 8.30 probably is the max. Okay, and you. right now, we envision them coming for the, the lunch rush, which is about from 12 to 2, and then coming again at 5.30 to 8.30. Okay. And no, they are, and they are not might. And and Miss and Hater, Mr. Alawami referred to a band. They're really an ensemble uh, for musicians. Additional questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Zuniga. We'll be back to you shortly here. Thank you. Okay, I don't have any other speaker cards. Um, I do have one comment card in favor of uh, approving the request. So we'll go to uh, follow-up questions of staff. No follow-up questions. Okay, uh, Dr. Zuniga, this is your rebuttal time. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything else you'd like to add? Great, thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing open to commission. Discussion or a motion, uh, Commissioner Reynolds. Thank you. Um, it's with great pleasure that I move approval of this uh, permit. This restaurant is an established old time in Thousand Oaks, and I remember when they did the street naming, and uh, that was really a proud day for your family to have the street named. Um, and so with that, I will move approval, SUP 2707-70285, with the findings and conditions as uh, in our packet. And as I said before, I think that this is a great thing for the restaurant. It'll be nice to have music along with your wonderful food. Commissioner Adam. I, I'm very happy to uh, concur with the uh, Commissioner Reynolds, and uh, I'd just like to say that uh, there's a lot of emphasis in Thousand Oaks to preserve things, to preserve open space, to preserve historical landmarks, to preserve oak trees, and I think this is a, uh, and it gives us the ability to help preserve one of the longest and most respected businesses on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, and that's Lupe's Restaurant, and so I'm very happy that you're here in our community, and I congratulate you for the years that you've been here. Commissioner Lynn. Yes, I'm happy to support the motion also. Doctor, I just want to say that if your selection of the music is a one one thousandth as good as your food, I think you'll have great success there if this motion passes. And thanks for coming down tonight. Additional? And I too will support the motion. Um, I've also been going to Lupe since I was in a high chair. So <laughs> I'm glad you're still around and uh, um, still enjoy your food and congratulations and um, good luck. Uh, vote please. Motion passed 5-0. There's a 10 day appeal period. Thank you. Uh, well, the secretary please call case 6C.
Hearing advertised as required by law is hereby open to consider agenda item 6C regarding case DP 2006-70593, PMW 2006-70595, OTP 2006-70594. Applicant Armstrong Garden Centers request to allow the construction of a new garden center, merging of two parcels into one parcel of record, removal of two dead oak trees, transplant one oak tree, prune one oak tree, and encroachment within the protected zone of six oak trees. Location, 928 Thousand Oaks Boulevard. Recommendation, approved with conditions. Mr. Alawami, you're up again. Thank you, Chair. Members of the Commission, uh, again, I'd like to direct your attention to the monitors for staff's presentation. Um, as mentioned, um, Armstrong Garden Center filed three applications requesting the construction of a garden center at a property located at the southeast corner, Thousand Oaks Boulevard and Taylor Court, and uh, the location um, of the site. Um, DP 2006-70593 to allow construction of garden center, parcel map waiver to allow merger of two lots, and, and the oak tree permit is to allow the removal of two dead oak trees, re relocation of one oak tree, pruning of one oak tree, and encroachment within the protected zone of six oak trees. Here's a site plan uh, showing um, where the building is going to be located and the parking lot, which is accessed from Taylor Court. There's a, a view of the site uh, looking southeast uh, the, of the intersection of Taylor and Thousand Oaks Boulevard. Uh, the project design, again, uh, again is to allow the construction of a 4,800 square foot building and 25,481 square feet of outdoor display and sales area. Uh, part of the project required uh, construction of retaining walls uh, to, uh, to grade the site. The maximum height of the retaining walls is six feet in compliance with the city's code. And there will be a parking lot that has 29 parking spaces located at the, the rear of the site accessed from Taylor Court. The project complies with the uh, C2 standards, except for three requested waivers. Those waivers are to allow 3.3% uh, parking lot slope, uh, reduce the landscape setback by 50%, which is um, on, from, on Thousand Oaks Boulevard from 20 feet to 10 feet, and on Taylor Court from 10 feet to 5 feet, and to allow 10% parking reduction, which is uh, three spaces. Staff supports um, these waivers and based on the, on, on the following discussion. Uh, staff supports the 3.3% parking reduction because um, the area of the parking lot will be only a small portion of the site. It's uh, at the south uh, part of the parking lot um, to, uh, and it will minimize the amount of grading and it will maintain the height of the retaining walls to the six feet as required by code. If we lower the parking lot, then the, the height of the retaining wall will have to be increased. Uh, staff also supports the reduction in the landscape setback. Um, staff consider the project to be a garden center which consists of plants and flowers which we did be displayed within the required landscape area which is on the other side of the fence which will have the appearance of a landscape area. Uh, the building will not be encroaching within this landscape area, which is the, the, the 10 feet that's requested to be reduced. Uh, staff also supports a 10% parking reduction. Uh, based on the parking demand analysis that was submitted by Armstrong Nursery, it shows that other Armstrong centers uh, in Southern California either has the same or less parking requirement than what the, code, what the city of Thousand Oaks code requires with the exception of the peak demand, which is limited only to springtime and weekends. Uh, and there is on-street parking along Thousand Oaks Boulevard and Taylor Court that could be used by customers. The building design includes uh, a gable and shed roof, awnings and trellis. Uh, the design complies with the city's architectural design guidelines for commercial projects. And here is a, uh, an exhibit of the elevations, the east and the west and north and south, which shows the trellis and the building. Uh, the parcel map waiver is to uh, allow the merger of two lots into one parcel of record. Uh, the oak tree permit 
application. Uh, there are nine oak trees on the site, seven on site and two off site. And the request is as follows, to remove two dead oak trees, which are number five and seven, transplant oak tree number four, which is in the middle of the site, prune oak tree number two, I'm sorry, oak tree number four is on, on, um, on the east side of the site, and prune oak tree number two, which is in the middle of the site, and to allow the removal of several branches for grading purposes and pedestrian clearance. The encroachment to the protected zone of the six oak trees are as follows. Oak tree number one, which is off Taylor Court, to allow for grading, fencing, and landscaping. Uh, encroachment within oak tree number two is to allow grading, trellis, and flower beds for uh, outdoor display area. Oak tree number three, which is on Catrans property, is for, uh, to allow grading and fencing along the property line. Oak tree number six is to allow the construction of the retaining wall along the east property line. And oak tree number eight and nine is to allow the installation of landscape. Uh, staff's evaluation of the oak tree permit is that transplanting and pruning the, and encroachments are necessarily to provide the applicant reasonable use of the property. Pruning and encroachments are not expected to impact the health of the oak trees. Um, and here's uh, pictures of the oak trees on site. This is oak tree number one, which is a large oak tree along Taylor Court. This is oak tree number two, which is in the middle of the site, uh, looking south at it. And this is looking from um, Taylor Court at oak tree number two. Uh, this shows the three, uh, three oak trees, number three, four, and five. You can see number three, which is a small oak tree right there. And number four is right here. And number five is the dead oak tree right behind number four. This is oak tree number six, which is on top of the slope. Uh, and these are oak tree number seven, which is a dead tree, number eight, and number nine, which are pres uh, requested to be preserved. Uh, the project is exempt from California Environmental Quality Act uh, because it's, uh, the project is an infill project and less than five acres in, site, in, in, in size. And staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the development permit, the parcel map waiver, and the oak tree permit applications based on the findings and the conditions in the staff report. Staff will be available for questions. Questions? Commissioner Adam. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a few questions. Good evening, Mr. Awami. Um, the setback reductions that are being requested, is that simply to increase the business area of the project? The, uh, well, excuse me, the exception? The, the setback reductions. Setback. Yes, uh, it is to allow the outdoor display uh, and sales area. And for the commission's information, this outdoor display area is less than uh, the one that exists at the Oaks Mall and similar to the other or less than other ga uh, Armstrong Garden Centers that were surveyed. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. Um, the, the parking report that was included uh, with our packet cited uh, the fact that there were 18 stalls of off-site parking. Is, are they referring to Taylor Court there in that, with that sentence? They refer to both Thousand Oaks Boulevard and Taylor Court. Oh, Thousand Oaks Boulevard as well? Correct. It's both, both streets. Would there be parking al allowed on Thousand Oaks Boulevard? In yes, front, in, uh, front of the in the supplemental report that you got tonight, um, traffic, uh, Public Works Department of Traffic revised their condition to allow five uh, on-street parking along Thousand Oaks Boulevard. Uh, okay, I see. So then there's more than 18 spaces, ultimately. Original shows 21. There will be around 18. Okay. Depends on the side distance. Okay. It could be less than that because okay. we need to have side distance for the driveways too, so. I but understand. And uh, you know, in visiting the uh, site there, uh, Taylor Court was um, kind of clogged up with unattended vehicles, RVs and the like. Um, I, I don't know, I, I, just have, I just think the 29 spaces on the site itself could be cutting a little close and I could definitely see how Taylor Court might be used for parking. Would, would Public Works, uh, would it be within their purview to clean up Taylor Court, uh, either with some sort of signage, you know, no overnight parking, or, or something to, to remove some of these unattended vehicles? Uh, Kathy Lowry will answer that question. 
Okay. I mean, pretty, the court was pretty much parked full. But to me, it looked like it, they weren't vehicles that move around much. <laughs> um, good evening, Chair and um, Planning Commission. I'm Kathy Lowry. I work in traffic engineering. Um, to post signs prior to the, um, the project going in, um, we feel it might be premature. As the project develops and is used, Tell Court in itself will probably monitor itself. The, right now it's used for possibly overnight parking. But it, we see that in other areas of the city that people who are parking overnight, they'll move to another place. Or the people who are using it might be businesses on Taylor Court and they're currently using it. But it may become more cumbersome to them to use Taylor Court and they'll put their vehicles on their own site. But right now, um, we, wouldn't w we wouldn't recommend posting it prior to the project going in. I, I wouldn't expect it to be posted now. So in other words, you'll kind of monitor the court and as the project develops, you would presume that a lot of those vehicles would be moved and free up the court. But if that didn't be the case, I mean, ultimately, Public Works could post some sort of signage there? Yes, we can post um, no parking vehicles over six feet. If there's a site distance issue, we can post no, we can limit it to two hour parking on Taylor Court. Yeah. So maybe that, that may be what's more desirable of the businesses in the area. We really would like to wait and see what happens, and I'm sure Armstrong will be very helpful in trying to help figure out what they want to see on Taylor Court. Right. Yeah, I, I would see, think it would be a, a progressive process that would have to be monitored, but just so I know that ultimately if it didn't clear itself up, the city could. Absolutely. It's yeah. a public street. Yeah, good, good. Okay. Uh, and, and you bring up a good point about the site clearance. With the RVs there, it is kind of difficult because all the turn-ins are going to be on Taylor Court, and you That's can barely right. you know, turn in uh, and, and see where you're going with the big RVs there. So. Okay, well, that's good. I was just saying, once it goes under construction, that's probably when it'll clean itself up by itself. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Uh, uh, just a couple other things. Um, the, uh, the fencing around the project, it's proposed to be eight feet high. Um, and the current fencing around Armstrong, I think, over at the mall is about six feet, correct? Correct. It, is eight feet um, a little higher than our standards, or...? What, is that a? Yeah, our stand, uh, code standards allows uh, ma maximum six feet high solid fencing. It doesn't say about right iron fence. And the discussion with the applicant, the reason for the eight feet is security. Um, they need the fence to be high enough that people will not be able to basically throw things over the fence. Mm -hmm. And the applicant is willing to discuss that further about the, the, the reason for the eight foot high fencing. Okay. Yeah, I'll, t I'll talk to the applicant about that. And just my concern is if we're going to reduce the setbacks and then put an eight-foot high fence, it seemed to me that that might be a little much, and maybe we could back off a little bit on the fence height. But I'll, I'll talk to the, the applicant about that. Yes. And then um, this would be for Mr. Moore on the trees. Uh, okay, the trees. It's always the trees. <laughs> uh, tree number four, the potential transplant tree. Uh, let's for, for a moment assume that uh, you know it, it is able to be transplanted. It's the, the roots aren't embedded in the bedrock, and it's alluvial <laughs> soil, and you can take the tree out and transplant it. Would the, would the process for the transplanting be a, more or less a same-day transplant? I, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but what I'm getting at is this isn't going to be boxed and stored somewhere for months on end. I mean, it, the most successful transplants that I understand it are same day. Uh, this tree would be uh, transplanted on site uh, and it would be dug side box and uh, held in, the, in that location to see if it uh, goes into shock or if it's a problem and then it would be moved to its uh, location. It wouldn't be the same day. It would be probably over a period of at least 30 days. 30 days? Uh, but it wouldn't be stored off-site, and it wouldn't be moved from its location. It would just be side-boxed and then watched and watered and taken care of until it saw that it, we saw that it uh, survived the transplant operation. Uh, I see. So it's kind of monitored while it's in the box to see how it's doing. That would be my recommendation. I see. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. From my little measurements there, it looked to me like the tree trunk was about 10 to 12 feet from where the beginning of the building would start. Would it, would it, wouldn't it be feasible to just leave the tree there 
and prune it versus trying to transplant it? We looked at that uh, option. The, uh, uh, the problem is, is the loss of area, of usable area that uh, uh, is planned for that uh, location. And then, of course, the tree then would be a, a tree that would, is a young growing tree only 10 feet away from a building. So yeah. uh, it's not the best of all possibilities to leave it at that location. Uh, it would be better if it were further from the building, uh, and it would be better, obviously, left in place. But uh, uh, in this situation, if it is transplantable, it's a good option. Mm. Well, I'm just trying to pick the lesser of two evils because the transplantation could event, it result in the death of the tree, whereas the, the pruning, which it looked to me would be very minor, would certainly give the tree a lot better chance of surviving. I know what you're saying about the closeness to the building, but I've seen a lot of trees in Thousand Oaks that are pretty close to buildings, and uh, they seem to be flourishing. So, well, we have we have allowed buildings to be built close to trees. Right. Uh, we prefer not to, and of course, try to be yeah. our minimum standard is 15 feet. Right, um, but, yeah. and that's for a small tree. Uh, the problem is, of course, the tree's going to grow, and I personally like to avoid future problems if possible. Mm. Um, I don't think that, uh, that you know that's in the, that's not in the near future that that's going to be a big problem for mm -hmm. a building. But uh, currently, it one of the concerns of the applicant was that it would lose a lot of space that they uh, uh, they've already uh, agreed to try and save the big tree in front, which. Uh, uh, takes some of their display space away. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you hit, if the, if the roots are embedded in bedrock, then it's it's over, right? I mean, the tree cannot be as transplanted. As far as transplanting, yeah. yeah. And, then the and what would you say? Is that a 50-50 chance? Or? I have no idea. Hard to say, huh? Until yeah, you get in there. It's hard to know until the geology is studied. I mean, yeah. They've done potholes for the geology, but that, that doesn't mean that right at that tree they know exactly what's going on yet. Okay. And then on tree number two, the tree in the middle, um, you know, there's a, in the oak tree report, there's a picture on the last page, and it shows a, the, shows the side view of the tree and a, and a line through the back of the tree showing where the, where the pruning would be. Um, I'm not sure that drawing's entirely accurate, though, because as I understand it, the tree would have to be pruned all the way around to achieve an eight-foot clearance. From, from back to front, so it, it, it seems to me that, that the pruning is going to be more significant than what's shown in that diagram. There will be more pruning than what's shown in the diagram. We asked for a section through the area that would be pruned for the building, uh -huh. and that's what we got. Uh, for the trellis, uh, they're willing to work with us on the height of the trellis and willing to work with us on uh, which limbs are we going to be removed, so there's no exact uh, uh, there's no exact quantity of, of branches that will be removed, but they will be removed. They will be raised up to about eight feet in the front of that tree, right. which will really balance the tree better than what it shows in that picture. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know the need for the eight feet because Armstrong's wants to display merchandise under the tree, correct? I mean, to have people be able to walk around it? Correct. Okay. Well, what would you say then is that you said to me once before that tree pruning, although ideally you wouldn't prune a tree like this, but for economic reasons and business reasons, you might be faced with that pro prospect, but you wouldn't prune more than 25 percent. Would you say this tree is being pruned 25 percent? This tree will exceed, the pruning of this tree will exceed 25 percent, and, uh, and it's because of necessity uh, of building the project. If the uh, uh, if the tree were to be removed, which was the other option being uh, considered, uh, of course that's the worst of all worlds. And then, uh, if the tree were left unpruned, they lose some three, I think over three thousand square feet of display area, and they've already got a smaller site than they had before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, economically, they're they're pretty pressed. So, uh, it looks to me like a compromise uh, as far as. Uh, the applicant and the city is concerned. Yeah, I understand. Uh, it's always a balance. Fortunately, the our city staff insisted that the tree be uh, salvaged, 
which uh, in my opinion is better than uh, removing it altogether. I agree. Um, is there any way in your opinion that this tree could be pruned 25% and Mint satisfy the, the site requirements? Uh, it would be, uh, of course, you know, the 25% is a guideline, but uh, oftentimes trees are pruned much more than that. But uh, I don't think that we could limit the pruning and still allow them to build what they want to build. Uh, that would certainly be up to the commission. But uh, uh, right now it's going to probably be 35 to 40 percent of the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, though, that this tree has grown to the ground completely all the way around and in an ideal situation if we were left in the open space that would be fine but uh, in any kind of development that went in there you'd want to bring the tree up so that you could enjoy the tree. What do you think uh, based on a 35 to 40 percent pruning of the tree uh, what do you feel the uh, survivor uh, ability of that tree will be? Well, I'm always a naysayer when it comes to uh, to what happens with the trees, but uh, I was wrong on the tree out in front of the Civic Center. They moved the, they cut the whole darn tree around and moved it, and it's still looking great. So, so far, uh, yeah. I would guess that this tree, and this is a, a agrifolia, a coast live oak, so it has a much better chance of survival. I'd say it's probably in the neighborhood of 75 percent. Well, that's a better survival rate than if we took it out of the ground, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. Additional questions? I think that's all I have for now. Thank you. Okay. Other commissioners? Uh, just one uh, question, Mr. Alawami. Um, in Kate Greeley's Oak Tree Report, uh, she recommends that a uh, qualified arborist do the trimming any trimming of the trees. Um, I don't see that in your report. Is that something you don't agree with? Uh, there, excuse me. There is a condition uh, that talks about the reference, the um, recommendations in the, in the Oak Tree report to be followed by the, by the applicant. And um, if there is a condition or recommendation in the Oak Tree Consultant report, there's a, re a condition reference in that. Uh, they need to follow all the recommendations in the report. Okay. I was looking at condition 149, the oak tree pruning, and it isn't in there, but if it's captured elsewhere in the report, that would be good. It's uh, condition 138. Great. Thank you. No other questions? Commissioner Lund. Thank you, Chair Fisher. I have a, a, a question uh, regarding the tree report just to, um, to clear up some confusion. On staff report uh, on page 42 of the, of the uh, agenda book tonight, second paragraph, it talks about the oak tree report and the pruning and encroachments with, from within. Oak tree number eight. Um, it indicates in the staff report that uh, the conditions are acceptable and won't impact the health of the tree. And then upon reviewing the, uh, the oak tree report, um, tree number eight in the additional comments section says nearly dead, very stressed with minimal live growth. And I'm wondering if you could uh, clarify that for us. Um. Maybe the Octo consult applicant's Octo consultant, but on the side, it's not. I mean, there's still some growth on it. Uh, there are seven, eight, and nine all in the same location. Seven is dead. If this is um, again, we um, staff will be will be looking at it. If it is uh, determined to be dead, then uh, it will be removed. However, initially it was to be saved in place, but uh, additional review will be done on that tree. Thank you. Additional questions? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and open the uh, public hearing. 
Um, I've got two speaker cards, both uh, vying for the first position. I've got a Ted Stelsner and Joe Emerald. Um, can you clarify who will be the main speaker? Uh, please state your name, city of residence, and if you're the main speaker, you'll have 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, Joe Amaral, uh, Glendora, California. Um, good evening, commissioners. Um, it's been a pleasure, Armstrong's been a pleasure, it's been a pleasure being in your community for the last 25 years. And along with that, I'd like to say that, you know, we signed a lease for 40 years for this additional commitment. It's taken us 40, four years to find this site. And along with that, you know, for, for the last year and a half, we've worked with the staff to make the best possible project here for Thousand Oaks. I've worked uh, with the uh, Rick Principe with the Thousand Oaks Boulevard Association to see what that vision was gonna be for the future of the community there. I have a letter of support from Rick and I have a letter of support from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'd like to say that, you know, being one of the 680 employees of our company, employee, employee owned company, that we're really sincere and we wanna be part of the community again. And we've done so much tweaking this store and making it right for everybody. And uh, I think it's a win-win situation for everybody. So uh, being said that, I'd like to give Ted Snellzer, he'll give you the details of our project. And along with that, we have our consultants to answer any questions. Okay, Mr. Uh, Stelsner, uh, we'll go ahead and continue on with uh, the 15 minutes there. I won't need all that. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ted Stelsner. I live in Ontario, California. I'm the architect uh, for Armstrong Garden Centers. Uh, they've been my client for over uh, 25 years now. And I want to reiterate what Joe had just said about Armstrong really being dedicated to this project. The city and Armstrong have really come together more in all the years that I've seen uh, on this project than any other project where they've both compromised quite a lot and they've come to what I think also is a very successful project and I'm very pleased to be standing here tonight. Uh, with myself and Joe, the vice president and general manager of the company is here from Armstrong to answer questions. We also have brought our Oak Tree Consultant uh, who met with your Oak Tree Consultant and Hader out at the job site. Uh, we also have our uh, traffic engineer to answer any questions if you have any about parking. And uh, oh, our uh, rock consultant, the uh, rock sub, who will be removing the rock from the site in case you have any questions about the removal process. Uh, that being said, uh, let me just say uh, a couple of items in response to uh, Mr. Adams' questions. The uh, parking analysis regarding the off-street parking, we worked out recently with the uh, the engineering department that if you're on Taylor Court looking to the right, the first 90 feet will be clear and there won't be any cars parked along there. If you're familiar with the site, that's all the way up to and past the storm drain inlet, the large storm drain inlet that's there. So there'll be room for, there. I think there are eight cars along Thousand Oaks Boulevard right now and there'll be five remaining. There are clearances also required at the intersection as well. And so we have to take another look at that and make sure with staff that you know we're meeting those. And then of course at the new drive entrances along Taylor Court, there are minimum clearances that we'll have to make sure. They said that they weren't going to uh, stripe those stalls, but they were gonna put you know, the signs up. So, and that's fine with us. We know from long experience and from the parking study uh, that my parking uh, consultants can confirm that uh, the number of parking spaces is adequate for our, our needs. Uh, speaking of Taylor Court, uh, we did request, Armstrong did request, uh, 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 to be look at the uh, Taylor Court parking situation along that street. We would like to see two hour parking along that street. I know uh, from experience uh, that there is a lot of cars on that street. Most of them are uh, the automotive repair places and the RV repair places. Uh, and I admit I have uh, parked overnight there myself. So <laughs> I know the problem intimately well. And I think it can be addressed and solved uh, relatively easily. Staff said uh, to us just what they had said to you. They'd like to see uh, the project go in and then deal with it and see how much uh, the problem changes uh, while we're under construction. So uh, we've uh, agreed to that right now. 
regarding the fencing, the eight-foot height, uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's two things about the fencing. One is uh, we just don't want it high enough so that it's easy to ho hoist somebody over and it's easy to hand something over. And, uh, of course, our fencing isn't a solid masonry fencing. It's a see-through fencing designed the same color green, and it's designed to see through it. And, you know, we have the uh, rendering that can show you that as well. And, of course, uh, the facility in Thousand Oaks now is actually wasn't an Armstrong Garden Center originally. We took it over and remodeled it, so the fencing's not exactly the same as what we will be putting in. But uh, the eight foot is a standard. The police uh, recommend that as well. But I'm six feet high. This is seven feet high, and so any fence, you know, at six feet high is fine for residential purposes, but, you know, you'd have to get to at least seven, if not eight, to be able to just not simply hand something over. And uh, we have had that occur in other stores, not at uh, in Thousand Oaks, but that's a pretty standard problem and another reason the fence is see-through for security purposes. Regarding the oak trees, I'm sure you'll ask me a bunch of questions, so I won't really address that. Uh, I do want to state, though, that Armstrong uh, and the city have made a lot of compromises on the oak trees, a lot in response to your concerns. Uh, and uh, I know you had a meeting out at the site this week. I did also with Hader and the oak tree consultant. And I, I agree it's a compromise, but I think we, I asked uh, George the exact same question you did, you know, what's the reasonable likelihood of saving oak tree two and it surviving and re uh, successfully transplanting oak tree four? Because originally we had been told that oak tree four uh, couldn't be transplanted successfully, at least in their opinion, and we had decided, you know, to remove it altogether. So we think that, uh, uh, that this is a good compromise. Armstrong has a lot of uh, criteria out on the site that a normal retail or uh, office building wouldn't. The amount of uh, shade on the ground affects the type of plants and the placement of them for display and sales purposes, the exact amount of shade underneath the oak, oak tree that we're keeping, which is about 3,000 square feet, a little bit more, uh, is uncontrollable. The tree grows. The trellis structure is, you know, where the trellis structure needs to be. So I think uh, uh, we rotated the gravel beds and modified the, the ground and did a lot of things to try and move the building, rotated the building. And uh, I think, like I say, that I think that's a good solution. Oak tree four, uh, I'd like to keep it in place, but it's just not possible. The building's too close. All our utilities are back there as well. Trenching on this site isn't normal trenching. It's going to be rock breaking. On most of the site, uh, except the very front of the site, the rock is only two feet underground. At the location of Oak Tree 4, it's about five feet underground, as best we can tell from the soils information that we've gotten, uh, which may be deep enough, according to George and our Oak Tree consultant, to, uh, to successfully transplant the tree, but we won't really know until you know, we dig it up, and then we'll have to address that. Uh, let's see. Any development would require the pruning of the oak tree, and uh, we're doing the minimum amount. Armstrong wanted 12 feet underneath the oak tree, uh, 14 originally, but uh, has compromised to uh, 8 feet in most of the areas. But really, the branches that we're keeping go all the way down to 5, and I've put those under gravel beds where tables will be and that kind of thing. Not a whole lot of display can go underneath the oak tree simply because plants need to be watered, and so it won't be a lot of plants underneath the tree because the oak tree doesn't want that much water. So it's, it's very limiting, and yet Armstrong is uh, very committed to it as a garden center and just because you know, they are who they are. I might add the president, both the vice president and the president of Armstrong are both uh, have degrees in horticulture and came up through the business, and they are very, very interested and concerned about uh, landscaping. They have their own growing grounds, for example. And uh, the other conditions are all acceptable to us. Regarding oak tree eight, there's seven, eight, and nine altogether, and we're not changing the grade uh, on those, and we're not affecting that area. So uh, if eight can be saved in place, which is what we're proposing, that's what we'd like to do. Uh, seven died during the course of the last year and a half of this project, unfortunately. And two, the oak tree that we're saving in the center of the site has grown quite a bit. Uh, the drip line has gotten a lot bigger, so that is also a concern of ours. But uh, uh, ultimately, I think we've, we've been able to resolve that. So that's, that's all I have, and I'm happy to answer any questions or my consultants any questions. Commissioner Reynolds. Good evening. Uh, you had talked about the parking on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, there being, after the site distance, five parking places? On Thousand Oaks Boulevard. 
Well, are you aware of condition number 100 that was in our supplemental packet where it says parking shall be prohibited on Thousand Oaks Boulevard on the uh, along the project frontage? Yeah, the first 90 feet is in the supplemental package. From the beginning of the radius uh, down, the first 90 feet it doesn't allow parking. The rest of the the rest of the street does allow parking where there isn't a conflict with the uh, intersection. But that isn't what it says on the condition number 100, so maybe that's something. Well, there was a supplemental clarification, I think, in the uh, supplemental conditions. I'm reading from the supplemental, that's well, why. Well, then Nader can probably answer that. They, they came up with that. Okay. Mr. That Allo, was my only yeah, question. Um, yeah, thank you. It's a supplemental report is the second condition in the bottom, which has been revised. The first one in the top is what's in the res what's suggested, but the bottom one is what's been revised. So you need okay, to the I understand. One the I'm bottom. sorry. Okay, I see. Thank you. Additional questions, Commissioner Adam? Yeah, I, I kind of read it the same way uh, Commissioner Reynolds, Reynolds read it. Parking shall be prohibited on Thousand Oaks Boulevard along the project frontage. That's why I, I had. In stress tail of court, but if you're telling me you can park on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, then you can park on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, right? right. Okay. All right. I've uh, just a uh, couple questions. Um, so you're uh, you're asking for that setback reduction along Thousand Oaks Boulevard and Taylor Court, and and I I understand the business area would increase, and and the fact that it's a a nursery will soften the the project. Um, Considering you're asking for the setback reduction, would a seven-foot fence work for you? Well, the, the setback reduction is a different issue than the fence, actually. The, the setback reduction is simply because Armstrong has another, I don't know, 40 or 50 feet of what is all flowered, you know, uh, plants. Flowered, that's where the uh, color flowers, the annual color is all along the street. So the intent of the setback uh, is to get the landscaping there, and this more than serves that purpose. We've had this in uh, a lot of different cities, and they've always agreed to it for mm -hmm. that very reason. It provides way more landscaping than necessary. The Not fence, it, it, yeah. we have had problems with seven-foot fences, and so we normally ask for eight. When we ask the police department, they usually want us to have an eight-foot fence as well. In this case, like I say, it's not a solid fence, it's a see-through fence. We have pilasters every so often, you know, to uh, enhance it with the looks, and we have planter baskets on top of those uh, things, and we have, you know, plants that grow up in tiers up to it, as well as small, uh, the rose trees, the tea rose trees. But it's designed, as you're driving down the street, to be able to see all that color and to see into the site. Uh, so for security, Armstrong has a big problem with anything less than eight feet. Hmm. Uh, is no, I understand, I, but the setback reduction means the fence is going to be closer to the boulevard. Yeah, but it's not a solid fence, so it really... No, I, I understand, it's a fence. So, uh, hmm. what, are some, what are the fence heights at some of your other locations? Well, they're all eight feet, with the exception of, I think there's one in Pasadena that was lower. Uh, what? Residential. Yeah, it was a residential area, mm -hmm. and they forced us to do it lower, and we just had to provide more security at that location, I think. Yeah, but it was across the street from an elementary school and a high school as well, so. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, there's quite a, a mound of rock in the center of that property. Oh, That's why we brought a rock guy. He might be there for a while. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be your project, but uh, do you anticipate any difficulties uh, flattening that out? Well, <laughs> I'm sure you we must. were talking about this before that Joe is not only our uh, Armstrong's uh, uh, director of uh, construction and real estate development, he's also going to be the general contractor on the job, and he's spoken with all the involved parties, all the subs on the, uh, the other site that had all the problems. Right, right. And our, uh, our rock uh, consultant, our rock uh, subcontractor, assures me that he's going to use some massive crusher that the one that they used on the site was a substandard uh -huh. and that he thinks that they won't have to do any blasting, but you know, we'll have to see once okay. we start digging down and see. Yeah, I'd hate to see for you to, you know, run into the problems that your neighbor ran into. And it was, yeah. It's costly, it irritates the neighborhood, and but it sounds like you've, uh, you're well aware of that. Um, I, would, I would say, uh, huh. So you don't feel that number four could be transplanted, huh? It could be kept in place, eh? 
No, I'm afraid. Uh, number four, no. It's uh, it's a beautiful tree. Yes, it, it is. is. It goes up. I wish tree two went up like tree four goes right. up. We wouldn't have right. to do all that pruning. But uh, originally, like I said, I didn't, we didn't think pre tree four could be relocated. And then when we went out there with your oak tree consultant, he was pretty confident that handled correctly, barring, you know, digging down and finding some horrific situation that it could be relocated. So it's hugely more expensive than putting in the replacement trees, but Armstrong was happy to. In fact, we had actually proposed relocating that tree originally and then uh, had canceled it. So, yeah, I, I don't think it can be done. For lots of other reasons uh, that I didn't mention as well, for example, Oak Tree 2 in the middle of the site, the grade is almost exactly, it's about within four inches of where it needs to be. Oak Tree 4, not the case, it's probably mm -hmm. off by a foot and a half. And uh, we would have to recess or build something around it to try to, you know, and it's, it, it would be, it wouldn't be possible to do. Mm -hmm. But the amount of trenching that we're going to be doing back there, and it's the only place to do the trenching, and in order to save Oak Tree 2, we had to rotate the building and move it away from Oak Tree 2, and mm -hmm. now, so I think 4 is a, a result of two. Mm -hmm. yeah, I could see that yeah. cause and effect there. Exactly. Well, I do appreciate your efforts on Oak Tree too. And uh, my, my comment to you would be that uh, Oak Tree Two could really be the centerpiece for your project. You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful tree. It's growing prolifically. And, and, uh, and uh, if you are approved, I would like to s see you uh, prune that tree as minimally as possible. That is definitely our concern and our, our, uh, our uh, uh, intention as well. The uh, redesign of the site now has the trellis structure wrapping around the building and then going behind Oak Tree 2, so it creates two arms with Oak Tree 2 in the center that open up to the corner of the property. Yeah. So I think it's going to be exactly what you said. It's going to be a centerpiece. It will be. It'll, yeah. it'll be a, a centerpiece of your project, and I could see in the holidays where you'd light it up uh, it, it could be of, uh, to your benefit to keep that tree as healthy and prolific as possible. Right. Well, and there are other things we're doing on the site, too, that uh, don't show up on the site plan very clearly, but will be something that the city will love. We, we're intending to put a, uh, a pondless waterfall at the corner by the monument sign. We mm -hmm. also have a sculpture, a life-size sculpture of a, a woman gardening. We call her Charlotte. We put her at our stores, and we'll put her out there. Uh -huh. You know, and, and it's all flowers around that, and, you know, it's, it's in their best interest to make it look lovely, and, of course, it's in your interest as well, so it's, it yeah. all works out. Just one, one other quick thing about Taylor Court. Again, you know, I read the traffic, uh, traffic the parking report, and I, st I do think 29 spaces is a little skinny, but the mitigation to that would be the fact that uh, Taylor Court would be available for off-site. Do, uh, do you feel that there needs to be a condition in here whereby the city would uh, it certainly monitor the, you know, the Taylor Court situation, but ultimately you'd be required or suggested that they post those signs, the two-hour parking or the... We would love to see that as two-hour parking. We wanted it 20 or 30-minute parking, and they told us two-hour was, you know, mm -hmm. the shortest period of time they could do, but... They said they don't uh, paint the curb because it's maintenance. They post signs, and they wouldn't do that until after we were in and they saw what happened. Mm. So, I, well, I just know, you know, old habits die hard, and I think there's some real old habits out there on that court. <laughs> right. Well, some, some of those things, like at the end of the cul-de-sac, there's a dry apron that goes into the drainage easement that we're being asked to remove as, as uh, we're asked to extend that sidewalk around, and so the cars won't be able to go up into the city's property and then, you know, park in the dirt either. So there will be restrictions that should have been in place a long time ago, mm -hmm. but it's something we definitely want. So we'll okay. work with the city. All right. Does that mean yeah. I'm out of time? It could be uh, the, the uh, alarm has sounded. <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Sure. Any additional questions? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stelsner. Yeah. Um, I've got three cards for questions only. Kay Greeley, Oak Tree Consultant, uh, Bill Mercer from Armstrong, and Brian Crawford from Armstrong. Any additional questions? Commissioner Lund. 
I have a question uh, for Kay Greeley regarding uh, Oak Tree Number Eight. Ms. Greeley, please state your name, city of residence. Uh, good evening, Chair Fisher and Commissioners. My name is Kay Greeley. I'm uh, from Simi Valley, and I'm the Oak Tree Consultant for this project. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> little pushing a button type thing. I'm a little confused here. I just had a question. You probably heard me earlier on uh, sure. uh, tree number eight. Can you kind of clarify that for us, please? Sure. Uh, the three trees that were together there, seven, eight, and nine, I think because of their location and the fact that folks have been parking up there for years, I think the soil's been compacted around them and they've suffered from a lack of water. And, you know, with the drought we've had, uh, they've shown the signs of that. And with the installation of landscaping in that area and some regular irrigation, it could make a big difference in the health of those trees, except for number seven, obviously. I think seven's a goner, right? It's gone now. When, when I did the oak tree report, it was hanging on maybe by a thread in, in the last uh, year. It's been almost a year since I did the field, the original field work. Uh, that tree has died. Okay, thank you for the insight. Mm -hmm. Additional questions for Ms. Greeley? Nope. Okay, I don't have any other uh, speaker cards, uh, so we'll go to uh, staff for uh, follow-up. Questions of staff? No questions of staff. Okay. Uh, give the uh, applicant. Uh, does staff want to do any follow up? Uh, staff have no further comments. Okay. Thank you. I'll uh, go back to the applicant, either Mr. Stilsner or Mr. Amaral. Uh, would you like to have any rebuttal or are you good with the way things are? Okay. They're good, so we'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing, open commission discussion and or motion. Commissioner Adam. Thank you. Um, well, there's a, there's a few things I'm not particularly thrilled about on this project. Uh, I don't like the eight foot fence and I don't think, you know, and I don't think anybody in Thousand Oaks likes moving oak trees around and trimming them, pruning them, et cetera. However, um, what I do like about this project is it's Armstrong's. And Armstrong's has been a great uh, corporate partner here in Thousand Oaks with a long track record. I do like the fact that uh, there's gonna be a nursery on this prominent corner, and I'm sure it's, by the, by the look of the plants, it's gonna be beautiful. I do like the fact that the applicant is sensitive to the trees and that you acknowledge that tree number two could be a centerpiece for your, for your project and that you'll treat it accordingly. Um, so, ac so with that actually, I, I would like to move that uh, we as planning commission approve uh, the three uh, applications that have been filed, the development permit, the parcel map waiver, and the oak tree permit. And I, I would like to just run something by the commission uh, as an added condition, and maybe ca uh, Council Noonan could comment on this. I, I've just, that, that Moody, uh, Moody uh, Taylor Court uh, is, um, uh, most of you have probably been out there, it is clogged with unattended vehicles. And, and I just wonder if we can't, if a condition wouldn't be appropriate here, as Mr. Stel Stelzner uh, requested that, that the city or the public works department monitor, just as they said, that they would monitor the situation and ultimately if the problem persisted, uh, use signage to remedy it to free up that court for uh, overflow parking. We actually did discuss that. Uh, public works department and myself did discuss whether or not we should, um, uh, before the project is even built, put some signage on the city. But as Ms. Lowry explained, um, we, there's really some uncertainty as to what will happen. It could be that once the garden center goes in, there's no need in the cars, you know, they're, they're not parking the cars on the street. We really don't know. Adding a condition such as that, you, you typically don't add conditions that require the city to do something unless you think at the end the applicant is going to have to do something. In other words, a condition saying city report X and come back in six months and if X is found to be true, then the applicant will do something. This is a little bit different. If we have a parking problem where we have a bunch of cars parking, the applicant wouldn't be required to install a bunch of signs. It would be the city that would do it. So it's really not appropriate to impose a condition requiring the city to do something as part of an application. The city will be monitoring it, however. 
All right, well, it, okay, that, you, that's a very good point to condition the city versus the applicant. Uh, uh, then I've, I'll just trust that, uh, as our as our uh, traffic expert said, that, that the situation will be monitored and that the ultimate goal is to, in fact, uh, free up that court from all the unattended vehicles. So with that, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make the motion, as I stated, to uh, approve the application. Comments to the motion? Commissioner Gremney? Uh, yes, with pleasure I'll be supporting the motion. Um, and uh, I just want to add, I, I don't have a problem with the eight-foot fence. Um, I've, as I leave tonight, I'll be looking at Garden of the Worlds, and I believe they have over at least an eight-foot fence right along the walkway that's right there. So I wish you a lot of success in the future. Commissioner Lynn. I also will support the motion, and I just wanted to, to comment from a security perspective. I understand what my fellow commissioner is talking about, about the seven-foot fence, but I'm in support of the eight-foot fence, and, and for the reasons that you've described, for security reasons, it is open. It isn't as imposing as a, uh, as a, as a block wall is, and so with that, um, I, I join my support for the motion. Commissioner Reynolds. Thank you, and I will also support the motion, and I think the eight-foot foot fence is a necessity. <clears throat> it's been many years since there was a garden center on the boulevard. In fact, the greenery was right across the street from what I remember, and it's been closed many years. And I really look forward to the beautiful landscaping that we're going to be gaining on the uh, boulevard because of your garden center. Great. Uh, this looks like a beautiful project, and I think you guys did a great job on it, um, staff and uh, the applicant. Uh, vote, please. Motion passed, 5-0. There's a 10-day appeal period. Uh, let's go to item number seven, miscellaneous items. None. Uh, item number eight, community development report. Thank you, Chair Fisher. Uh, on page 75 of your packet this evening, you will see the uh, Planning Commission tentative agenda for the next two months. There are, uh, it's a relatively busy agenda looking out to uh, the end of November. And again, it's on page 75. And then also on page 77 in terms of cases that you have uh, considered recently that have gone on to the City Council, the Moshiri case, which uh, you considered on July 23rd and uh, denied a request to subdivide the property and for PPD on the property, was heard by the City Council on September 11th. The City Council uh, denied the PPD as well and continued the hearing on the land division until uh, tomorrow evening, September 25th, as well as a uh, request was made to staff to provide a recommendation regarding a potential moratorium on subdivision of property and development in that neighborhood. So that will be heard again by the City Council tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. And that's all I had at this time. Great. Uh, minutes for September 10th, Commissioner Reynolds. Uh, I move approval in the minutes of the September 10th, 2007. Vote, please. Motion passed, 5-0. Item number 10, uh, AB 1234 reports. No re Commissioner Reynolds. I have a report. Uh, I attended the uh, sixth annual Ventura County Housing Conference, which I always thoroughly enjoy every year. Uh, was interesting and uh, it was nice seeing old faces. Commissioner Gremney. Um, thank you, Commissioner Reynolds, because I think I would have forgotten. I also attended uh, the same conference. And I think there was critical information there, and I'm very appreciative that the City of Thousand Oaks allowed me to participate. Uh, in particular, the information that you received from um, the Chair of Economics from USC and also um, the uh, information that we received from uh, one of the economic professors from uh, UCSB and gave me a lot more insight on what's going on within our community. So thank you for allowing me to attend. Uh, item number 11, Commission Comments. Commissioner Reynolds. Thank you. I um, gave each of the commissioner, uh, commissioners and uh, staff a flyer on the Las Vegas Cool, which is benefiting the hospice of the Caneo that will take place on uh, Sunday, October 7th, and it will be over at the Moorpark Country Club, and you can go to their website, or Las Vegas 
cool.org website if you'd like tickets. And I believe uh, Star City Attorney Dealey is here for assistant CSA. Uh, I was attorney. asked. I'm supposed to be out of town that weekend, so I'm trying to see when I'll be back okay. in town. If I'm back in town, then I'll be dealing, but it's not sure. It's always a fun evening, plus it really benefits a great organization. That's all. Any other comments? Commissioner Grundy. Um, I attended the last um, city council meeting, actually for a different issue, but while I was there, I had a chance to um, address uh, Mayor Fox and Councilwoman Irwin. I'd just like to report back to you that, you know, game is on. So they're, uh, they're with it. And I, I just want to mention to uh, Chair Fisher uh, that um, Newbury Park High School is the only undefeated team in the Marmonte League, but I will happily wear a Westlake jersey in the event at that game um, they defeat Newbury Park High School. I'd like to remind Commissioner Grumney that one win doesn't make a trend. Uh, Commissioner Lund. Thank you, Chair Fisher. And as long as we're parting, uh, parting sides here, um, just so we had some additional clarification, my commitment to wear another jersey is based upon my investment in the uh, the sports at Thousand Oaks, and my son's playing freshman football. So I will I will accordingly wear a jersey based upon what my freshman team does, and I will support you if you ask nicely for varsity in sympathy. Any other comments? Okay, we will adjourn to 6.30 p.m. October 8th, 2007.